This is the Movers and Shakers podcast, episode 12. Welcome to the Movers and Shakers podcast, the place where high achievers share their secrets on how to take your life, career, and business to the next level. And now, here's your host, Rob Wilson. Yo, you. What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the Movers and Shakers podcast. I am your host, Rob Wilson. Thank you so much for joining me. It's always great to be with you. And I'm really proud to report that now we've got listeners in more than 40 different countries who are members of Movers and Shakers Nation. So our community is continuing to grow, and I can't wait to see what amazing things you guys do after being inspired by our guests. Quick shout out to Mom QK, the ABR, L Denise, and Getting Inspiration for leaving reviews on iTunes. Thank you so much for the feedback, and I'm happy that you're enjoying the show. And if any of you other guys out there listening want to tell us how you've been inspired, please leave us a review on iTunes, and you can do that at robwilson.tv slash iTunes. Now, if you guys have been following any of my Money Monday segments, you probably already know that I get shocked at how little we're taught about two of the most important things in our life, and that's health and wealth. Well, today I'm happy to bring someone to you that can give you great advice on both of those topics. Sean Croxton is a health expert with a tremendous following on YouTube, Twitter, and a top-rated podcast on Blog Talk Radio and iTunes. He's the founder of undergroundwellness.com, and he's built a successful lifestyle business around his passion for health, and he's sold hundreds of thousands of dollars of products on health and online business. He's got great tips on how to get healthy and also how to monetize your expertise, and I really feel that if you do both of those things well, you can truly live the life that you want to live. As always, if you're out running or driving or working out or doing something else, Don't worry about grabbing a pen and paper right now. You can always get links to everything that we talk about in the show notes. Those will be at robwilson.tv slash Sean Croxton. So without further ado, here's the founder of undergroundwellness.com, Sean Croxton. All right, everybody, welcome back to another edition of the Movers and Shakers podcast. I am your host, Rob Wilson. Very excited to have our guest today, the founder of undergroundwellness.com, Sean Croxton. Uh, He's a YouTube personality, a health expert, and an entrepreneur. And so you guys know how passionate I am about building wealth. I think that the two things that we should talk most about in our lives, health and wealth. And so you know I've got the wealth kind of taken care of, but today we're going to get business and health advice from Sean. Sean, thank you so much for being here today. Thanks so much for having me, Rob. I appreciate it. Absolutely. So can you just take us back a little bit, give us some of your background, where you came from, and then how you came to create this wonderful business called uh, undergroundwellness.com? Well, location-wise, I'm originally from Oakland, California, as well as Alameda, California, but I moved down to San Diego to attend San Diego State University back in 95. Can't believe I've been here for almost 20 years. That's crazy. Time flies. But um Yeah, I went to school there. I studied kinesiology, um, learned what I thought was everything I need to know about fitness, nutrition, and health. Uh, Graduated, became a personal trainer, applied that information that I learned in college um, to my clients as well as to myself and just saw that I wasn't getting the results that I was supposed to be getting or I figured I'd be getting. And so I started reading books from people who completely disagreed with the whole food guy pyramid, uh, calories in, calories out model that I was taught in school and uh, started to apply that to myself and others and got the results that we were looking for. So um, fast forward maybe a couple of years and YouTube had just started. It was relatively new. And so I just started making YouTube videos and just sharing the information. And, um, you know, that turned into the radio show a year later and blogging. And now we create products and cool stuff to help people out there. That's awesome. So let's dig in a little bit when you were talking about you, you went to school, you studied, you got the information, but you, you weren't getting the results that you thought that you should or could be um, achieving. Can you tell us about that and, and what changed to start helping you get those better results? Well, well, <laughs> the food guy pyramid is a trip. Right. It should be called the food lobby pyramid because that's really what it is. Um, I mean, six to 11 servings of grains and all that stuff that we were talking about back in the day. I mean, most of those grains were containing gluten and most people have a gluten sensitivity, which is not a good thing. Um, But the fact that I was 
advocating taking all the fat out of your diet, you know, taking the skin off of your chicken and, you know, don't eat coconut oil and don't eat butter. You know, you're better off, you know, eating. I can't believe it's not butter. You know, if if you can't believe it's not butter, then what is it? You know what I'm saying? Um, But uh, uh, drink your soy milk, drink low fat milk, all of that stuff um, that wasn't really smart. And it And the reason why I was doing it, because we were focusing on calories. You know, if you eat more fats, you know, fats have nine calories per gram. And if you eat more fats, then you're going to crank up your calories. And it's going to be hard to get into that negative calorie balance and all that stuff. But, you know, in hindsight, it was completely wrong because it's not about calories. You know, it's about nutrients. It's about hormones. It's about giving your body the, the fuel to do what it's supposed to do instead of starving it. Right. If you're starving, you don't have energy. Right. And what your body does is it slows down its energy production. It slows down its metabolism. And this is why people end up gaining all the weight back because they're starving themselves. The body thinks like, hey, I'm going through a famine right now. So let's slow stuff down. And so you're going to be able to get some temporary weight loss. But, you know, in the end, you typically gain more than, you know, you you weighed in the first place. It's a trip. And you've got energy issues and you've got hormonal issues and on and on and on. It's, it's, It's a pretty bad situation out there, unfortunately. A lot of bad information. So how did you get so passionate about this subject? Oh, man. Um, I don't, you know what? I, I guess it's just because I care, right? You know, I wasn't that personal trainer in the gym who was like, you know, give me your money and I'm just going to get through this hour and you can go home. Like I was really serious about getting the results like the big days for me, not only for evaluating the progress of my clients, but also evaluating my progress and my abilities as a a personal trainer were Fridays. You know, like every other Fridays I would do like weigh ins and body fat percentage measurements and stuff with my clients. And, you know, we weren't getting the results that we wanted. And that's just not me. I'm a results oriented individual. And so that's where that passion comes from. And I also feel like, you know, people just need to know the truth. Like it irritates me when I hear people talk about calories in and calories out. When I see it on TV, when I see bad information, it irritates me. I think, you know, one of my top values, we'll say one of my top 10 values is truth. And so when, when, when lies and misinformation it has run amok, it, it bothers me and I get really passionate about this stuff. So what, what are the couple of really big myths out there that you think uh, or misconceptions that people have about living their best life, as, especially with regards to their health? What are the things that the top couple of things that people should think differently about? Well, when it comes to health, uh, fat does not make you fat. You know, people think fat makes you fat. Oh, my God, this has so much fat in it. Like, I can't eat it. Actually, fat keeps you full. Uh, fat doesn't have a, an impact on your insulin levels. And so insulin is what causes you to store fat. Um, let me think of, of, of another one. Beef, like eating meat is bad for you. That one kills me. I just saw a really good friend who I work out with in the morning. He was like, man, I think about not eating meat anymore because meat, meat gives you cancer and meat gives you heart disease and saturated fat is bad. I'm like, no, 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 no. You want to eat meat. I mean, of course, like good, you know, pasture raised, grass fed meat, of course, because that's what I call real meat. That other stuff is a little weird, right? But, you know, that actually has... Um, stuff in it, such as CLA. CLA is actually a fat that helps you to burn fat and also helps to um, prevent cancer. So people say red meat gives you cancer. I'm like, no, it has CLA in it that uh, keeps you from getting cancer, but that's only the grass-fed meat. And so it's a trip, man. Um, Beef is a a, a big... um, it contributes a lot or has a lot of uh, vitamin B12, which is really important for energy and brain health and all of these phenomenal things. And so, you know, it cheers me out. We were talking about this and he was like, yo, you know, people in Africa, they don't eat beef. And I was like, for real? You know, the, the Maasai, like, have you heard of the, the Maasai tribe? I mean, they, they eat nothing but beef. They think the cow was put on earth for them. You know what I'm saying? And so they eat beef. They drink raw cow's milk. They drink the blood of, of cows and whatnot. And what's crazy is when the researchers went and looked at them and tested their cholesterol and tested their, their uh, rate of heart disease, they didn't find any. You know what I'm saying? And so, hey, if, if beef wasn't, isn't a problem with them, how can it be a problem with us? And also, how does an old school food cause a brand new disease? I mean, heart disease is relatively new, but people have been eating beef forever. And so what happened? Yes, I agree that, you know, some of the commercial beef, you know, when I drive up to five in California, going up to the Bay Area, there's like a five mile patch there where you're like, damn, something's funky up in here, right? 
those cows, I ain't eating. That's not my thing, right? right. You want to make sure you get your, your, your beef from a good source. And uh, there's a lot out there. You just got to look. So can you tell us about, you know, after you finished school, did you, did you uh, start as a personal trainer immediately or, or what did you do then? Literally immediately when I um, finished school, the gym that I worked at, they comped me a um, personal training workshop that was actually at the gym. And so I got to attend that and maybe two weeks later, I got the certification and it was time to roll, threw me in. So how did you then go from uh, working as a, as a personal trainer at the gym to then creating this lifestyle business around your passion? Well, the thing about the gym was that um, I was trading my time for dollars, and I, I didn't like that. In order to make more money, I either had to raise my prices, which is hard when I worked on campus because a lot of my clients were students or their parents are paying for it, and they liked the fact that they got the deal. So if I said, hey, I'm cranking up my rate, they'd be gone, right? Or I had to work more hours, and when I was working more hours, I was literally there all day. Get to the gym at 6 o'clock, don't go home until 8 o'clock. It was killing me, right? And so... um when I discovered this whole YouTube thing and started putting the videos out there, you know, during that same time, I was trying to figure out, yo, what's a way that I can make money and not have to actually be somewhere, right? And, you know, I, 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 I dabble with some network marketing, which I love. Um, I dabble with selling bootleg hip hop CDs, right? I mean, I did all these things, but when I, when I finally found the YouTube thing and I saw that it was a growing audience, I said, yo, there's definitely a business here and I'm not sure what my product's going to be down the line, but I can certainly offer them my services as a nutrition coach. And so, you know, I was able to put calls to action in my videos and say, hey, if you guys want a free consultation with me, then contact me at da 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 So I would be doing free consultations all day, right? Just banging them out. And um, just was able to build my coaching business through Skype and over the phone. And as I was able to build that up, my personal training clientele I was able to, to bring down. And then at some point I was able to say, okay, I'm making enough money with this coaching thing where I can just go ahead and get rid of the training. But I was still trading time for dollars, right? And so um, I just, you know, they, they say when the student is ready, the teacher will appear, right? And I just happened to have a client who was in this whole internet marketing game. And it was so weird because we were on the phone one day and he brought up the fact that he was moving to San Diego. And I was like, for real, I'm moving to San Diego? Where are you moving to? He's like, yeah, I'm moving to Strata. And it was like, Strata was three blocks away from where I was living. And he happened to be moving in with another internet marketer that I had met a couple of years before in New York, who I had stayed in contact with on Facebook. And so when they moved there, I just started going over to their place all the time and just learning. Like, like they were like my Yodas. And they were showing me like, yo, how to get the, the YouTube people and the blog talk radio people onto an email list telling me how to create products, how to promote affiliate products, how to write copy, how to do all of that stuff. And, um, you know, instead of it going through one ear and out the other or saying that I'm going to do it and never doing it, I actually did it. And, um, you know, the rest is history. So let, let's let's get a little bit deeper because what we like to do on Movers and Shakers is really give people some actionable tips and advice that they can use to try to recreate your level of success. So let's go back to when you first started to get on YouTube. Um, what were some of the, the techniques that you used to really get and build a community? Because folks, they get stuck, especially when you bring a camera into the mix and you've got to edit the video and they just they'll, they'll never do it. So what were some of the tactics that you used to really start to take off on YouTube? Tactics is an interesting word because I don't feel like I really use tactics. Right. I just do it, man. Like I, I just <laughs> I just put out stuff that people like I, I read and I'll be, you know, reading something and I'll be like, "Ooh, people need to know that. And I'm, I might write it out, like what I'm going to talk about, or I might not. And I would just turn on the camera and I would just do it. When you bring a camera in, um, it can be a little nerve wracking. And your presentation is not going to be as good as you want it to be when you first start. But I think in terms of tactics, I can't really call it tactics. I'll just call it a way of life and a way of business is that you're going to suck at first, but you're going to get better. 
right? You just keep practicing. So, you know, don't expect to come out the gates, you know, killing it. It's simply not going to happen. Um, being consistent is key. You know, back in the day, I used to be very, very consistent with YouTube. There would be two or three videos per week. I mean, I haven't done a YouTube video in three weeks, though, because right now it's not my priority. Radio show is my priority. My upcoming project is my priority. And so YouTube is, you know, a couple rungs down the, the, the totem pole there. But consistency, knowing that you're not going to be amazing when you first start doing it, engaging with your viewers or your listeners or your readers, you know, uh, responding them to them on Facebook, responding to them on Twitter, all of that's good stuff. That's what they want. Maybe having a forum on your site. I mean, you want those people to, to get to know you to become your raving fans. That, that's huge. And the more that you give, um, the more that they're willing to give you back when the time comes. And so I would say another thing is just to, to be patient and just really stop worrying about what product you're going to put out. Worry about your credibility, getting people to, to trust you and being a credible expert on YouTube and getting people to always say the most um, – important acronym in all of marketing is KLT. It's a no like trust because people need to know, like, and trust you because people like to buy from people who they know, like, and trust, right? I might put out a project, I might put out a product and it may be that the person who's buying it doesn't even really want it. They're not even going to use it, but they're just saying, hey, Sean has been cranking out free content all year long and now he's got a launch coming up. I'm going to support him with my XYZ dollars, you know, and that's what it's about. I remember many years ago, a friend of mine says, Sean, it's all about getting your thousand true fans. And I was like, what do you mean? She says, you just need a thousand people. Like how many people in the world right now on the internet, right? And she says, Sean, you get a thousand raving fans who will do what you say, put out, put out what you, you put, or, or watch what you put out, listen to what you put out, what, read what you put out, and give you a hundred dollars a year each. And I was like, 100 people, $100, 1,000 people, it's $100,000. I was like, 1,000 people, that's easy, right? And so that's what I do. I just crank it out. And then we have, you know, a pretty big email list now, a good size email list. But, you know, this percentage here are actually buyers. But that's enough, right? Between affiliate products and my products and all that good stuff, that's all we really need. You know, I make decent money. I make pretty good money, but I'm not super rich. I'm good, and I have a good lifestyle where I'm not working all day and trading my time for dollars anymore. I might get up for, and start working at 8 o'clock in the morning and be done you know, by noon. And the rest of the day is mine, which is pretty cool. But it takes time to get there. And Sorry, I taught you your own. No, no. That, that, that is, <laughs> that's fantastic. And you have that great California sun uh, to soak yeah. up all day. And so I, I really need to get on, on your side of the uh, country at, at some <laughs> point. But I really, really love that framework that you put out there about the thousand true fans. Because I, you know, a lot of the individuals and young professionals that I work with as a, as a financial coach, I actually break it down sort of in the reverse way. Uh, because a thousand to some people is still a big number. So I say, can you get, instead of getting a, a thousand people to pay a hundred, can you get a hundred people to pay you a thousand dollars a year? And so a thousand dollars a year is $83 a month. And 80, if you round that off to $80 a month, it's $20 a week. And so you don't need to sit there and beat your head up against the wall trying to come up with a million dollar idea. You need a $20 idea that you can just do over and over and over again. And so, you know, but, but either way, the math works. And so I really hope that people put that into action. So let's, let's move forward in, in your progression. Can you tell us about maybe what the first product was that you put together that started to help you move away from trading time for dollars? First product, the first product I ever promoted to my list and to my listeners was um, it was called it is called Pro Tandem. It's a network marketing antioxidant supplement. And man, woo! In hindsight, that was ballsy. That was really ballsy because it's network marketing. And there's the stigma, and there was all this trust and credibility that I built over the years. And it was like, here's a network marketing product. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And so. Um, uh, it took me a long time to make a decision on this. I mean, the, the, the science on the product is incredible. Like, nobody can debate with me over whether or not the product works. I mean, you go to PubMed.gov, you type in ProTanum, you're going to get 15 peer-reviewed studies on the actual product. It's huge, right? Um, can change people's lives. And I remember it took me 15 months to finally make a decision because I was stuck in 
that whole, I need everybody to like me and I can't deal with haters and criticism and stuff like that. I don't want to make a bad move. And um, I just got to the point where I was like, shame on me. Shame on me if I, if I know about this incredible product and I don't share it with these people who listen to my show. And so I did it. And yeah, there were some haters and there were a lot of unsubscribes and there was bad email and there was haters on Facebook and all of that stuff. But I knew to myself that I was helping people, not only helping people with their health, but also helping people as a network marketing organization. People who were actually tired of trading time for dollars were coming in like, yo, let me, let me check this out. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And becoming distributors for it. But when you're you know, just kind of making ends meet and then you get like an $8,000 check in the mail, things change a little bit. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And then you're like, okay, okay, this is what it's about. And those checks kept on coming and those checks were based on work that I had already done and I was getting paid over and over and over and over and over and over again for it. And I was like, this is cool. And what those checks allowed me to do was to move away from coaching. I mean, as much as I love coaching and working on one-on-one -on -one and all that fun stuff, sometimes clients can drive you a little crazy. You know what I'm saying? And so I stopped coaching and I said, okay, I'm going to write The Dark Side of Fat Loss, this book I've been wanting to write forever. And, and the way that I was able to do that is because I had the money coming in from the network marketing company to kind of hold me over while I wrote this book. And so I cranked that thing out. And here's the one thing that's really important about writing the book and one of the reasons why I was unable to do it you know, before, um, first off, I got a coach because writing a book is much different than writing a blog post. And that's really important. Um, and number two, and this kind of goes along the same lines is I got over that whole, I need to do everything myself mentality. And I started bringing people in. So my writing coach, graphic designer, marketing dude, you know, uh, website guy, all of that, all of those people really helped me. And I reached out to my, my followers and my readers and my viewers and said, yo, I want you to help keep me accountable for this. So I was getting like random emails like, yo, Sean, how's that book coming along? Tweets like, hey, Sean, which chapter are you on in the book? And so that really kept me going. And it was about three or, month, three or four months that I actually got the entire book done and all the graphics done. And it came out really, really good. Not, not perfect. And that's the thing. And that's the big point here is that people want their products to be perfect. You know, as entrepreneurs, we want everything to be perfect. But when I let that thing go, when I said, okay, it's never going to be perfect, it's still not perfect, but it's okay. And because if it was perfect, I'd still be working on it right now, two years later. You know what I'm saying? And uh, so, so, so those were my first two products and, you know, the change in my mindset that allowed me to create those and launch them. How'd you get over? Was it the fact that you had the coaches, that you had these outside influences that helped you get over that uh, perfectionist syndrome? You know, I think it was more, I think my buddy Antonio, who had created a book called Healthy Urban Kitchen Cookbook, who one day just, just, just maybe just said that in a conversation. Like, yo, man, you know, my, I love my book, but it's not perfect. But, you know, I was talking to such and such and they were like, yo, it's never going to be perfect. And that just really crept into my psyche. Like, okay. I can get this done. I'm the only one who knows it's not perfect, right? Yeah. Because I hold it to this, you know, whatever. Um, but the people out there who are reading it think it's the most amazing thing in the world. Like my ebook is used um, as part of the nutrition curriculum at St. Mary's College in California. That's crazy to me, right? And so um, it's wild that people are being tested on what I wrote. And like I said, it's not perfect, but it's definitely good enough. So you self-published an ebook. Did you do you have uh, physical copies as well? I do not have physical copies. I'm actually thinking after our next project um, that I might have physical copies printed up. We'll see. And so, what was? Can you give us an insight on this as well? People get hung up in this. Uh, do, do I go and self-publish versus trying to get a publisher and do all this kind of stuff? Can, can you give us some insight into your feelings on that? My feelings on that is. If a publisher gives me enough money, gives me a pretty fatty advance, I will go through a publisher. But most of the people that I know who have published books out there aren't making much money off of them. And that's, that's, that's the problem. And you know, with me, with the dark side of fat loss, my marketing dude who was working with me on this, he was like, you know what, man, we really didn't have to do a whole marketing campaign for this. 
you know, you already had an email list. You already had followers on YouTube and on Blog Talk Radio. All you had to do, Sean, was say, hey, my book's done. Here, here's the link, right? But I think a lot of people out there want to write books, whether it be an ebook or whether it be a, um, a physical book, but they don't have a potential customer base. They don't have a list. And so that's the problem. You can write the most amazing book in the world, ebook, physical book, but if you don't have any customers there to buy it, no one's going to find it. You know what I'm saying? And so I think a lot of people are doing it upside down. Um, build your base, build your foundation, build your customers, build your list, connect with people, engage with them, get to know what they want. You know, that's the thing. I, I, I hate it when people tell me, oh, yeah, man, I wrote this book and I, I shot it out to my list and nobody bought it. And I was like, did your list ask for that? Did they actually, did you engage with them? Have they been sending you questions or, you know, asking you like, hey, I want you to write an ebook on such and such. Have you heard that once? And he was like, no. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And so you never want to create a product that your fan base and your followers never really asked for. People were asking for the Dark Side of Fellows. Sean, when are you going to write a book with all this stuff in there? Sean, I can't afford to um, work with you as a client. Is there anything other way that you can put me through your program? And that's what the Dark Side of Fat Loss is. It's me having one-on-one -on -one Skype coaching sessions. It's word for word what I would say during those sessions, but a little bit better organized. That's what it was. And when I put it out, you know, that's why it worked, and that's why it still works. And what? October 11, 2000. Two and a half years later, it's still selling every single day. It's great. That's that's fantastic. So, you know, I'd like to see if, if you could tell us about a, a story along your journey when maybe you failed at something, because uh, it sounds like a lot of things that worked and you've you've experimented and you've been very successful. But is there something along the way that uh, didn't work out as well? And, and what did you learn from that? You see, dumb things that I've done, dumb things that I've done is I had my web designers um, make me a new website called undergroundwellness.tv. That was supposed to be primarily for videos. You know, I was posting videos there and stuff. And I was like, in the end, I was going, why am I not just posting videos on undergroundwellness.com? Why do I have them create a whole new, like, well, this, this was dumb, Sean. This is a big waste of money. And number two is that I made a website that looked very similar to someone else's website. It was kind of like a personal development business site, seancroxton.com. And, you know, I told my web designers, they were asking me like, yo, um, send us sites that you like. And I was like, I really like this one. I want something similar. And what it ended up turning out was something that looked exactly like it, where people would say, oh, this site looks like such and such a site. And so I never really launched it because it didn't feel congruent to me. You know, I want original stuff. I never want anybody to say, oh, this looks like somebody else's. That's not my thing. Um, oh, things I failed at. Some hiring things, you know, where, you know, my gut said, this probably isn't the best fit, but I'm going to give them a chance because everybody deserves a chance. And I think they'll rise above and all that stuff. Um, and half of the time they haven't worked out. And that's, you know, with any business, to be honest, um, how I dealt with haters back in the day, I would really go back and forth on YouTube comments or on Facebook publicly with haters, you know, and now I don't do any of that. I don't care what my haters think. Um, you know, actually, I feel compassion for my haters, to be honest. You know, I feel sorry for them and what, what they're going through in their life, lives to actually sit there in front of their computer in their pajamas and write negative things about people all day. Like, you really have to be hitting rock bottom for stuff to do stuff like that. What, so, what, are, what are some of the things that they would say to you? Um, I would hear racist stuff. I would hear, you know, Sean's not a doctor, which is true, but don't listen to this guy. They're just big, long posts. And it's like, damn, y'all. Um, I had one kid. <laughs> in hindsight, it's funny. I wrote him an email. And just a, a cool email. I was just replying to one of his emails. And he took words out of it and, like, strung them together and made this video that made it look like I was saying something completely different you know, something that was completely wrong. And when that's online and you can't do anything about it, that that's that's tough, you know, because I was uploading my own videos in the sidebar. I would see these videos about Sean Croxton, you know, in the related videos. And I'm like, damn, what can I do about this? Um, I had another there's another guy. He probably still makes videos about me, uh, an Australian dude. He makes videos about me just talking trash and saying, I don't know what I'm talking about and yada, 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 yada. But whatever, you know, these days I call him the head of my marketing department because people find out about me through his videos and they go to my website and they're like, oh, this guy's not so bad. And they join my email list and then I, you know, get to engage and connect with them. And eventually they may be a customer. 
I love haters. Haters. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's it, you really do. If you're going to put yourself out there like that, you have to develop a really thick skin. And so I think that's great. Some uh, some great advice for people who are, you know, kind of on the fence about, you know, putting their information out there in the world and, and dealing with that kind of stuff. So, you know, I appreciate you sharing that. No problem. If you don't have haters, you're irrelevant. You're not doing a good enough job. I, you know, recently I kind of switched my direction on YouTube and I have like more personal development marketing videos on YouTube now. And I was looking at all of the thumbs up and thumbs down. There are a ton of thumbs up and like, and like eight thumbs down. And I was like, damn, what am I doing wrong here? I need more thumbs down. You know, my buddy, my buddy Elliot Hulse, who has a huge YouTube channel, he gets hate mail every day. And I'm like, damn, how can I get more hate mail? <laughs> Come on now. And so it's cool. You know, and I hate to sound cocky here, but, you know, I say for every hater, I help 10,000 people. No, I helped 1,000 people and I make $10,000. I'm good. I want more. That's a great way. That is a great way to think about it. So since you talked about that, you're changing and switching gears a little bit. Um, what's next for Sean Croxton and, and Underground Wellness? Where are you where are you taking everything? Um, it's staying the same. It's staying the same. But I do want to go and like YouTube is I hardly make health videos on YouTube anymore. You know, like I said, I did like a retirement video a couple of months ago and it was like, yo, how many ways can I say just eat real food? Like I'm tapped out y'all. And so, um, I feel like the personal development part, the mindset part is just not, not just a, a huge factor when it comes to life in general, but it's huge when it comes to getting healthy. You know, if you're trying to get healthy and you don't have your, you know, your mind right, you know, if you don't have a big enough why, if you don't have, you know, understand um, the laws of success, you know, like Napoleon Hill stuff and all that stuff, then you're not going to be successful at getting healthy. So I love how this mindset stuff applies to almost all walks of life, which is great. Um, but where do I see myself going from here? Uh, we're creating, I have something called the Second Opinion Series. And so we're coming out with our first one. May 4th. It's called the Thyroid Sessions. It's the second opinion series, volume one, the Thyroid Sessions. And soon there'll be volume two and volume three and volume four. And it's just interviews with experts on camera um, on different health conditions. And so I'm going to do these for every single condition under the sun. And then um, next year, I'm going to come out with my own online business program. And you know, here's something for your audience. If you're an affiliate, for other people's products, you know, I sell, you know, probably a new product every month or so to my list that I didn't put together. And what you get to see, what that gives you is good data. And it gives you data for what your audience likes to buy. Mm -hmm. So in this last year and a half or so, I've sold maybe 300 something thousand dollars in online business training programs. Um, these are two, three, four thousand uh, dollar programs. And um, it tells me hey, Sean, your list likes this stuff and your, your list is more likely to buy something of that kind, mm -hmm. you know, that type of product if you put it together. So um, I spend most of my time now, especially with Skype calls and all that stuff, talking about business. And so I have a whole thing, um, an outline laid out for this program that I'm going to probably put out in February or March of next year and just launch it once a year. And uh, it's going to be the most incredible thing you've ever seen when it comes to online business training. It's going to be big. And then, you know, I'll maybe do some speaking. I don't like flying and traveling and stuff like that when it comes to business. I don't like hotel rooms, but I need to get over that because I truly enjoy speaking. I was in Toronto a couple of weekends ago, and it was just a blast to just be on stage for an hour and, you know, the the the... the enthusiasm that everybody had and the attention that they were paying and people say, Oh my God, that was the best one of the day. And da, 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 da. I love that. I love that. People are sending me their YouTube videos going, your talk encouraged me to make this video. It's my first video because Sean Croxton finally got me to do it. And I'll tell you, I'll tell you the, the, the one thing that really resonated with a lot of people and maybe it'll resonate with your audience. If you have, if you, if you're stuck, if you're like, damn, I want to make a blog, I want to do a podcast, I want to make a YouTube channel, whatever, and start creating content, but you just don't, and you keep putting it off, right? There are people every day who send me emails like, Sean, thank you, I was going through this, and I stumbled upon your videos, and what you said, or the book that you told me about, or the expert who you're interviewing changed my life and completely pointed me in a different direction, and my life has not been the same anymore, right? And there are people all over the world in pain with problems, 
who are looking for solutions. If you have a solution to somebody's pain and you're not putting it out there for them to, to use, for them to have to make their lives better, you're kind of an asshole, right? And that's real. And people really resonated with that. They're like, oh, my God, I am being an asshole. I can change somebody's life today. But you're not because you're scared, right? I'm scared all of the time. I'm scared every time I do an interview. I'm scared every time I, I do my podcast. I'm scared every time I make a video. Every time I hit the upload button. Every time I write something. I'm scared. But I just do it anyway. So you got to realize is that what you have to realize is that that fear for me and maybe for you as well, it's never going to go away. You just have to learn how to dance with it a little bit better, right? But when you can dance with your fears, psh, sky's the limit. And like Napoleon Hill said, it's false evidence appearing real because the stuff that that fear monger in your head is talking about 99.5% of the time is not true. So you just got to do it. And you grow as a person when you do it. You do. You really do. And, and, and that was sort of the process that I had to go through uh, in launching this podcast. It had been on my mind for a while. I had been listening and consuming other people's podcasts. And then I just made a decision that in January, I was just going to launch it. And whatever happened was going to happen. And the first couple ones were kind of terrible. Uh, I was freezing up. The audio wasn't great. Uh, but you know what? I got them out there and I learned from those mistakes. And, and it's funny, I received an email uh, from an old college classmate of mine. Uh, she hit me up on LinkedIn and said, hey, I, I, I left a review on iTunes, but I just wanted to reach out to you personally, let you know I, I'm really enjoying it. It's helping me in my, in my profession. And I appreciate the, the uh, increase in quality from the, uh, from the first episode. And uh, first of all, I would just appreciate that she took the time to say something in general, because a lot of people will enjoy your content and just never say anything to you. Right. So I appreciated that, number one. But number two, I, I appreciated the fact that she understood that, hey, wasn't going to necessarily be the greatest in the beginning, but the information, the content was there. And now the other stuff is is getting well, is uh, getting better, too. So I, I so much appreciate you saying that, because I think that that's going to help a lot of people just get off the couch and just go put something out there in the world and, and just help people. Jay-Z. I, mean, <laughs> I love this quote. He says, uh, far from a Harvard student, just had the balls to do it. And that's what I say, man. I'm not the smartest guy in the world at all. These marketing people can talk circles around me. They start talking about their stuff. I check out. I'm like, I, I, this is confusing me, y'all, right? I just do it. And that's it. <laughs> it's, it's really just that simple. Yeah, it's really just it. that simple. Dance so, with fear and do it. You, you've given us a lot of information so far. If somebody is sitting out there literally right now and they say, okay, I've got this business idea. I want to do the types of things that Sean has been able to do. What are the, let's just say, first you know, couple of steps that you would say that they can do right now to start heading along your path? Pick a medium. So there are three primary mediums online. You've got writing blogging, okay? You've got uh, podcasting and you've got uh, video. Pick the one that feels the most comfortable to you. You know, people get all, you know, stressed out. Oh my God, I, I feel like I need to do all of them. Like, yo, maybe at some point you want to be doing all of them. I do a little bit of all of them, but you really want to just focus on that one thing. You know, uh, my buddy Elliot Hulse, like who I mentioned before, he's like, Sean, you got to read this book called The One Thing. And that's just you focusing on that one thing that you do best, which is hard for me because I feel like I do everything really good, <laughs> you know what I'm saying, to be honest. Um, but focus on that one thing that you do best and just do that. And I feel like people get this paralysis by analysis thing. They go to 8 million different courses and seminars, and the next seminar is always that one. You know, I'm going to go to that next, I'm going to go to that <laughs> seminar, and then I'm going to get started. No, you don't because you want to go to the other one. You know, you got to understand that there's no right or wrong way to do this. You just got to do it. So um, just get started. Pick a platform, get started. Don't even worry so much about having your website up and running. When I started my underground wellness stuff on YouTube, I was sending people to my MySpace page. You know what I'm saying? And so send people to Facebook. People are hanging out on Facebook all day. People spend way more time on Facebook than they do on your website. 
Put your stuff there, right? Connect with them there. Do that. Um, and I, I think that that's enough. Just just get the ball rolling. Get comfortable with creating content and just dive into the pool. You know, I, I promote Marie Forleo's B School every year, and you know that's the thing I'm really focusing with them on with them. I should say this year is like dive into the pool. I want everybody to just create some content this week and send it to me. And when they send it to me, they go, oh, my God, this is my first blog post. I've been trying to do this for years. Da, 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 da. I'm so happy I finally did it. Thank you so much, Sean. And I'm like, yeah, now do it again. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And then they can't wait to do it again. And so, yeah, pick it, pick your platform, get started, get a Facebook page, and just slowly you know, keep creeping along, keep chugging along, and things are just going to get bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. You just have to be patient with it. That's awesome. Are there any other books out there that you might want to recommend uh, that folks read uh, besides The Dark Side of Fat Loss? Of course, uh, everybody's going to go and check that out. But is there anything else that particularly in inspired you? Think and Grow Rich. That's one of those books you got to read like every year. It should right? be required, yes. Yeah. I just read one called Three Feet from Gold, which is really good as well. Um, the Education of Millionaires. Psh, I wish I would have read that book a long time ago. That, that's, uh, that book blows my mind. Secrets of the Millionaire Mind. Because a lot of people have a hard time getting going online because they got money issues. They got crazy, crazy. And I used to have them myself. Um, um, you Are a Badass. Really good book I thoroughly enjoyed. And I'll give you one more. Oh, Uprising, like how to build a brand online. Here's a freaking phenomenal one. I'm filling you guys up for the next six months. Um, Life Unlocked by Sereni Pillay. I did a radio show about that. So if you type in Underground Wellness, Life Unlocked, you'll find the radio show, you know, 90 minutes instead of reading the whole book. But what really stood out about that chapter or, or that, that book for me was the chapter on fear of success. You know, there are a lot of people out there who don't become successful because they fear being successful, the way that their life is going to change, the way that people are going to view them, uh, being found out, you know, the, the stuff that celebrities deal with all the time. Um, and I, I had a lot of it. It was like, check, check, check. I got that one. I got that one. And that really helped to kind of push me. You know, that and Secrets of the Millionaire Mind were the two books that probably had the most influence over me and helped me to get over some major obstacles that I had to get over. And if I didn't get over them, then I would still be stuck. Actually, to be honest, if I didn't get over them, I'd still be personal training, to be honest. Awesome. So between all of the advice that you've given everybody and that list of books, I know the audience has a lot of homework, but I think they're going to be much better off having going through all of that information. So thank you so much, Sean. Um, let's talk about, uh, we do have your event coming up that, uh, that I am going to be an affiliate for. So, so let's talk about that. And then uh, I know you got a bunch of things to do, so I won't want to take up uh, much of your time. Let's, let's tell everybody the best place to find you online, and then we'll say goodbye. Undergroundwellness.com. And I think by the time this airs, it'll be a brand new, pretty awesome website. Oh, you're going through a redesign? I've been going through a redesign for the last three or four months. I don't know where the hell they're going to get this thing done. <laughs> Driving me crazy, but it'll be worth it. It'll certainly be worth the wait. Um, but yeah, in this next week or two, it should be brand new, nice and clean site. And you know, that, that's just another tip real quick before, before we, we end. At some point, get an idea of who your followers are. Like most of my followers are women. Right. If I look at the Facebook and all that stuff, they're mostly women posting there. But if you look at my website, it's very dark. You know, it's underground wellness. It's really a lot of black and gray and stuff like that. Like women don't want to hang out on my website. Right. So I was like, yo, we got to make a change and just not go completely feminine, but with some more neutral colors with a little feminine tinge to it. Just so people will want to hang there and gather. Exactly. And you know what? I think there's an important insight there, too, about it being females. And maybe you witnessed this before. I, it seems to be that women are more apt to take action and take advice from uh, websites like this than, than men are. Why do you think that is? You know what? I, I don't know why exactly that is. Um, I, you know, I honestly do not have an answer for that question. I don't know. And that's, you know, one of the things about the dark side of foul loss. I just had a call, you know, last week with Ryan Lee, who's a big guy in the marketing space. And he was like, dark side of fat loss. He's like, at some point you might want to 
retool this because most guys aren't going online and buying fat loss books. It's mostly women. And when women come to your site and they see dark side of fat loss, it's just, it just doesn't resonate and appeal to them. And I was like, that's a good point. So we'll probably change that at some point as well. Yeah, he's awesome. And then and then tell everybody about the thyroid sessions. Oh, the thyroid sessions. I'm sorry. I'm just talking today. I'm no, th- listen, we, we love this. You're giving Diarrhea. us so much information. Um, thyroid sessions. So... I, me and my web guy, or my, my, my director guy, who actually does the directing for Snoop Dogg's GGN channel on mm, YouTube, mm. awesome guy, right? Really good. He and I traveled up and down the West Coast, and we interviewed experts on thyroid health, Chris Kresser, Dr. Sarah Godfrey, Dan Kalish, all these people. And so um, we're going to put them online May 4th and help people with their thyroid health. So I think... It's going to be the first online summit that I have ever heard of that actually has face-to-face HD videos instead of doing, you know, just the audio or slideshow presentations and whatnot. So I'm really excited about that. That's going to run for a week to a week and a half. And we're just trying to help people, you know, heal their thyroids and get the, get the information that they need. I mean, there's so many people out there who are just on random thyroid medications because, you know, their, their doctor does the same medications for all of their patients, but it's not customized to them. And so uh, all the information that they ever needed about thyroid problems is going to be in this summit and I'm really excited about it. So again, it's called the second opinion series, volume one, the thyroid sessions. That's great. And everybody in movers and shakers nation that's concerned with that, you can reach Sean's program at robwilson.tv slash thyroid sessions. Uh, and so we'll just send a lot of traffic over there and, and, and we'll get a lot of people the help that they need. Um, Sean, I can't thank you enough for spending some time with us dropping some knowledge with us on the lies that are out there about trying to manage our health, what you should eat. We really appreciate that. And then also giving us some fantastic tips about how to create a business around your passion and really live the lifestyle that you want to live. So, so Sean, thank you so much for being here today. Thank you, Rob. Good times. Well, there you have it, everybody. Great information from Sean on the misconceptions we have about our health how to monetize your passion and your expertise. And he also gave us a great list of books to put on our summer reading list. And I know that's going to keep you busy for the next few months. So big, big thank you to Sean for coming on the show. And if you'd like to attend his free online summit on how to regain your energy, lose excess body fat, and heal your thyroid naturally through real food and lifestyle changes, go to robwilson.tv slash thyroid sessions to register. Now, I got to tell you, I've had a chance to take a sneak peek at what he's putting together for you, and I think you're going to really be impressed by the quality and also the content that he's put together. So if you want to sign up for that, go to robwilson.tv slash thyroid sessions. Now, what's our key insight for this week? Well, I thought it was very interesting when he started talking about dealing with haters. And he spoke about how he had to get over the need to have everybody like him and the fear of getting criticized before he could truly be comfortable putting himself out there and then ultimately making a living by giving advice. Now, this is important because I believe that most people think they have a fear of failure when what they really have is a fear of getting their feelings hurt. Now, I know many of you are holding yourselves back because you don't want someone to challenge you on your knowledge or leave a nasty comment on your Facebook page or your website or your blog. But Sean also told us that it's extremely selfish of you to hold back information that you have that could change somebody's life just because a very small minority of people out there might have something negative to say about it. So what's your action item for this week? Well, I want to try to help you get over your fear of getting your feelings hurt. So I want you to think about one of the best pieces of advice that you've ever given to someone. And I also want you to make sure that you have at least three statements that support why someone should follow your advice. And then I want you to take that advice and I want you to put it out there to your email list to your blog, Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, Instagram, Pinterest, whatever you use the most and wherever you have the most friends and followers. And I want you to just see what happens. If you'll just take some time and put your message out there, I promise you, you'll probably find out that it's not as bad as you think. 
And if someone does challenge you, you'll have those three well-researched points to back up your assertion. And that preparation should help you take away the fear of dealing with anybody that wants to hate on your advice. Okay, guys, so thank you so much once again for being here with us on the Movers and Shakers podcast. You can get all the information we talked about in the show notes, robwilson.tv slash Sean Croxton. And if you want to tell us and share with us how much you've been inspired and the amazing things that you've done with that inspiration, please leave us a review and share that with us. You can do that at robwilson.tv slash iTunes. So guys, thank you once again. You guys get back to work and I'll see you next week.